action. Hey, so from the last time when I seen you, after I left, I was coming home, right? Yes, and I was right there on MLK. Then all of a sudden, the boys in blue came behind me. Hey, 12, put them lights on me. Boy, I said, oh, man, I'm already at the house. Why y'all finna stop me? So I came on through the gate and I parked, hit the off button, you know what I'm saying? I turned the joint off and they came. It was two black officers. Both of them came to my vehicle, had their they hands on their weapons, looking at me like, sir, put your hands on the steering wheel. So they come, they go through the process and they start talking to me. He said, you seem real nervous. I said, hell yeah, I'm nervous, man. I'm at home right now. That go, I can see my apartment from here. I'm being stopped by two black police officers, and all I can do is comply. Do you feel black police officers? Man, I don't like to be in any situation where the other the, the opposition has more power than me. And you think that a black police officer have more power? Every officer of the state has more power than me. Is it, based, is it just based on the badge, or do you honestly feel that? If you resist, you will go to jail. You will. Okay. I, I, have, I have the power to take you to jail, but do you fear going to jail? It's not about fearing going to jail. I have a life. I got children. I got things to do. Hey. How many black officers has ever committed a crime as far as killing another black person and it went national? Or is it just when a white man kills us? I don't even... When any time a person gets killed by the state, I think that's wrong. Correct. But how many black people kill other black people under that badge? I can't. I don't have the Bureau of Statistics on. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's a lot. Once once you enter into a fraternity, my job is my job, man. Okay, so do you think that Africans get treated different than black people when they get stopped? I don't know. Do you think that Africans are African Americans? No. Do you think that black Americans are African Americans? No. Do you think that black people are Africans? I think everybody's an African. Okay, so do you have any disagreements? Or is there anything that Africans do that irritate you? Have you, have you ever looked at an African and seen yourself different from an African? Yes. You can look, man. Hey, we can't play pretend. You can look at their physical features and you know automatically if they are from this region or they're not from this region. If I see a black man from England, I can tell that he's not a black man <laughs> from America. Like your geographic location has a lot to do with your, your physical bearings as well as your, your lineage. Correct. So I, I, when I see a person who's significantly different, different than me, I say, hey, man, he's different than me. Okay, so you being from Texas, can you tell when somebody is from a different state? I mean, sometimes. Mind you, not even a different country, but just a different state, a black man from a different state. And that's the beauty of it, right? Because your geographic location has more to do with who you are as a person than the color of your skin. Like a that black, is true. A black man who grew up in New York has a completely different lived experience than me. And when I went up there and I was like, yo, B, you like my uppies? I had no idea what this person was talking to me about. The vernacular was completely different. Correct. Uh, so we know, but 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 at the core of it, you understood what he was talking about. Now you don't you don't necessarily know, but there's a connection there. Now if you was to go, <laughs> there, hey, if you was to go to New York and you was to talk to a white person, knowing so, it's a it's still the different vernacular, right? You wouldn't understand oh, what, what they what, were talking what, about. What are you trying to say right now? You trying to say that like black people have a universal connection? That like we, I I, I believe so. Like we, but I don't. I don't feel like I have that same connection with Africans. Like, like with kindred spirits or some shit. I think so, bro. When I find a person, I love my niggas. I don't. I, it's it's a it's a deep thing and it's profound. But at the same time, I don't have that same thing for Africans. I couldn't say that. Cat Williams said the best in his special. Right? Okay. He said, "I love black folks, man. I love them. These are my people. This is who I am. It is. I don't love my people no more than I love any other person. Correct." Like that's just my that's my frame of reference. That's my right. reality. And so no matter what you look like, we can have a shared experience and have a positive shared experience based on my willingness and your willingness to participate. Correct. But my affinity for a certain like object would be because I am socially and also like uh, economically connected to it. Like this these are my people. Like the struggle that my ancestors went through, I'm not going through that same struggle. No, not at all. But 
I can when relate. Your, when and your I can... ancestors were struggling, there were rich black people at that time. As, t- as so today. Yes. I'm just saying statistically, at that time, no, we don't want to say this, right? It's a fun fact. 10% of slave owners were black. Correct. That's an unfortunate reality. But when, that, when that's what the economy is, if the economy is slavery and you deal in chattel slavery, if I try to say that I'm going to hire people to come work on my plantation, I'm going to go bankrupt because ain't nobody else hiring people to work their plantation. But isn't that the cost of business? That's like the, if I'm if if I'm gonna have this plantation, do I not need I'm somebody looking at to come? Slavery as an economic system, the exact Correct. same way as I look at capitalism as an economic system. If you want to, if you want to do, see, business, I don't, I don't, I don't look at slavery as that. I look at the product. What's the product? So what were they pushing out? Cotton and tobacco. I understand what you're saying, but I, I like to I like to focus on the labor force and how the labor force has transitioned. We okay. went from a slave economy to a capitalistic economy. Is that still not a slave economy? In every economy, the workers always exploited for their labor. And that, so, is, so, so, so then we could term every economy as a slave economy. So then, now can we term the democracy that we so live under as a slave democracy? I think it's just the progression in human the human existence. We went from. Uh, a feudal system and mm-hmm. as that progressed then you started to have uh, systems like this you know what I'm saying we have heads of state we have democracies you have a congress you have, you have representation for the people this is just the natural progression what the next iteration of this looks like it all depends on free people doing powerful things to say that I want my government to be reflection of people we don't have those conversations like identity it, it matters you know, and identity does matter in politics it, as well. It shapes your frame of reference. But as a group, if we truly want to be powerful, then we have to participate in the industries that the industries that already exist, and also we have to be innovators to go and create our own See, industries. And then that will be more of the side that I would lean on would be the innovation part we of have it. To be because if people. I if I was to if I was to be in this system and I was just to abide by this system, the system does not grant me any liberties. But that. What do I have the liberty to do? I have the liberty to go piss outside when I want to. It's very difficult. Like, if we don't have, we, it's hard to have a class conversation because so many poor white people, they dislike poor black people. And I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I really don't. I've been around poor white people and they, they have a, a, a essence about themselves that's, that's better than an African. If you came to have this interaction with these people, then they're one of the rare whites that have that experience. When you look at the majority of states in the United States of America, they're predominantly white. Okay, so you look at the majority of cities, they're predominantly white. Right. By statistics, 73% of white people don't have any interactions with anyone outside their race. See, and I, I'm not speaking on that demographic because I'm speaking on the demographic of the white folk that they have seen. I'm not the first black person they've ever seen. So it's it's not like a, a new occurrence when they see me. It's like you you if know you come in contact with these folks is because y'all have proximity. And we so, have proximity so because I'm 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 working in spaces that frequent white folks. So they understand your lived experience and so they have a connection with you. For a large portion of the white population in America, all they see is a caricature of me on television or what they see as they scroll through the gram. They don't actually. What do you see when you scroll? See, I've always been interested in that. What what do you see when you scroll through the gram? Everything in life is based on relationships, right? So, as a black person, when you scroll in and you see something deplorable to black people, how does that make you feel? No type of way. When I look at Instagram, when I look at Instagram, I understand that this is just people performing to get clicks and likes. Correct. You know. And so if the algorithm if the algorithm is promoting the most deplorable things, then I'm gonna do the thing that makes the algorithm work. Human beings are incentive based people. Correct. And so what if, am I getting? If, so if I'm if I come on here and I'm having the most profound conversations ever, but you wanna see some big fat ones just shaking, then you finna scroll right past me because you got some things to look at. Correct. And so you gotta meet the people where they at. Correct. You know what I'm saying? And I and I dig it. Like, I love black people too, but we have to have like a, a spirit of entrepreneurship, a spirit of a solidarity, not based on 
just because we black, but, but I, I feel we're like to achieve some shit. We're gonna achieve it, but it will be through innovation. Because they have already figured out what we are good at. But we can this economy has already figured out what black people are good at. So then now I can put you in a lane to make sure that I exploit everything that you're good at, but I do not allow you access outside of this lane. They tell you representation matters, but it's not also just representation, but it's also concentration, right? Correct. Like I can look at a, at a team and it's, it's, a, it's 10 white players, it's one black player. Like I'm represented. But I don't think I'd want to be the sole black dude on a white team. I don't know if that's going to do. It's a different experience. We call that hockey. <laughs> hey, but they're black players, though. I mean, but even when you look at, uh, say, baseball, ba- baseball used to have a good concentration of black players. Because that was our focus. So so did boxing. So did every uh, sport because the sport is what's given to us, but the sport is not what's going to free us. Baseball is expensive. But if they are giving us just the sport, now all of our role models is just sport. All of our thoughts are sports. Everything related to us, if you are big, strong, and fast, you could play this sport. And if you didn't play that sport, people would look at you different. Can if we, you if you if you six five, built, they be like the first thing people come up to you and ask you what you play basketball. Okay, it's related to sport. If you if you have a nice build on you, people come up to you and ask you, what sport you play. Well, what's the significance of that? Like I get to determine my reality. Correct, but if I do not know that there's a different reality from what I am presented, where am I going? I ain't looking hard enough, man. Like we, like I cannot. I have to hold myself accountable for my behavior. Correct. I have access to information right now. These phones that we have in our pockets, these thousand dollars. Okay, machines. we we as grown men, we have access to information. I, I, I had libraries, man. Like we had you access as to a kid had access to information. So what do you do with that information if not share? We get to tell whatever story we want, and so I think that's one of the biggest components to to having actual freedom is creativity you have to be able to tell a better story because that's, that's how society changes it's through rhetoric all of a sudden you just tell the same story so what if my rhetoric again? comes through entertainment it, it what can. if everything i it, it, that's definitely what's going on in today's time my rhetoric comes from me consuming all of these sources of media i don't really have a thought process my thoughts are all in memes and you, quotes. You speaking in like general? Yes, sir. I'm not speaking about myself. No, no. That's okay. No, that's I'm, not I'm what saying, I'm saying. Like I understand where people are, but you can connect with these people, and that and that that had when you're a leader, when you're a thought leader, mm-hmm. when you're an innovator, you have to see what the trend is and meet the people where they are. So we have to be able to take this message, however potent the message is, and you have to make it digestible. Like the the audience determines whether I'm funny or not. The audience tells me whether I'm intelligent or not. If they look at me and say, "Man, I have no idea what you was talking about," then my message is dead in the water, you know. And so I have to be able to connect with them in some way, especially in the way that the the, the exchange of information has changed in such a way that it's very hard to keep up with it. But we we as men we have access to the information, right? So then how do we disseminate that? And not only that, how do we give it to our youngins? How how do we tell these kids, like, honest to God, this, this what we live is not easy. And it's not going to be easy. How, how do we have those conversations when we are only presented with entertainment? So our, our mindset is strictly based on how can you make me smile how can you entertain me i participate in the exact same media economy and so i get to curate my experience and i know the type of output that i want and so when i take my phone and i link my phone to my television i got a whole playlist and i'm finna start with like youtube videos youtube videos of business principles it's gonna be some fuck shit fuck shit fuck shit youtube video like I got to take a break from being serious all the time. You got to have some type of levity on your mission. But my main focus is that I'm programming myself for the mission. You can do that right now. And some like 
if you take a pause and you look at a booty, then all of a sudden the algorithm is going to feed you booties. And so you have to remind yourself, hey, get back to what the, the whole purpose is so mm -hmm. I can continue to program myself to go be powerful. Okay. And do you feel as though our, our people, as a, a black person, what's up? Well, what what is what is the politically correct term to call ourselves? Man, you get to determine <laughs> your own reality, and so you, if I'm talking to you, we can we can have whatever type of uh, language that can be used as colorful as it can be. And for, and for most of the world, I'm a black man. Mm. If you want to get more specific, I'm a black man in America. So when you describe yourself, I've never heard you say the word nigga. I use it uh, in, in in my common talk all the time. I, okay. I, 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 build, I build nigga houses. I build nigga mountains. But do you find that term derogatory? I could care less about the word nigga. I, I, all I care about is the, the perception of my people. And if you think that me saying the word nigga makes a nigga perception of who I am, then, then that's, that's your right to make that decision. I can't uphold no whole entire race on my shoulders. I am me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like that's that's the journey. That's the fight, bro. Like that's the only way that you can really disseminate information is to be a reflection of your actual thoughts and it has to be your lived experience. Every person that I meet that's, that's non-black, I know that I want them to have the most positive experience with me as possible. Why? So, why, why, why do I grant those people that, but I don't grant my own people that? That's everybody. You want everybody to have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, whenever I meet anybody, I want them to get the best version of me every time I meet them. Every time. Every time. I want my presentation and my care and my discernment to be the exact same. And that was instilled in you when? Shoots, man. Just through life, through lived experience. Experience. Heck yeah. So if my experience is not going outside, because in order to have those experiences, you had to leave your dwelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So if I'm not leaving my dwelling and all I'm doing is scrolling, what will be my lived experience? And then how can I ever, how can I ever connect with somebody who has, who has actually had the lived experience? I think everything in the digital realm is the feminine experience. Because, in the, oh, oh, that's hard. because yeah. femininity is really based on presentation and your social awareness and how you can operate in, in social settings. Correct. Being, masculinity is really a, a physical existence. It's physical. It's a physical I'm, existence. I'm in your presence. Yes. I'm in your space. Because because you masculinity feel. is I can move objects. I can be powerful. I am an opposing. I can move objects at will. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's the power of masculinity. That's the power of testosterone. And as soon as you remove physicality from the existence of humanity, then it's a feminine existence. Because I do not have to do anything to get my point across. So everything in the digital realm is a feminine existence because it lacks any physicality. I can't reach out to touch you. I'm behind the keyboard. So my point is, every man that's on social media having these digital connections, you have <laughs> zero power. Absolutely not. So go outside. But then that's why the creators go outside. You have to be like this is the this is the like Mr. Thing. Beast goes outside, mind you. Yeah, he he's an online presence, but I have to make myself a presence in the physical in order to actually move currency or move stock or move our thought process. You have to physically do it because most, I can see it on my phone. The most powerful commodity in America right now is still the physical labor of men. Of men. The infrastructure, uh, concrete workers, uh, rebar people, all these people still have to maintain manual labor for our system to exist. Correct. And so as long as we acknowledge that, we still control this entire society. Right now, it, it's, it's going to change in about 12 years. But if we hold that power right now... I don't think it's going to change. I think that it will crumble before it changes. I don't I don't think that this... this system that we live in is ready for a, like an actual change because whenever a civilization is met with change, that civilization crumbles. When I was working at the Anheuser-Busch breweries, this is in 2008, mm -hmm. I watched them replace 10 jobs with robotic arms. They brought the robotic arms in and they was doing the exact same job that these, that two human beings was doing. Mm -hmm. This has been happening for, for two decades now. Correct, because we are now moving towards what they call uh, 
like a technological age. Like technology will be the the new era. So then now if my job is obsolete and I do not have anything to do, all I have to do is scroll. So that's why they implement things because now you are already conditioned to be comfortable sitting down. So now we are we acknowledge what the trap is. The trap is the scroll. The scroll right okay. now, right now, that the perpetual scrolling, that's modern day slavery. As soon as you get onto that joint and it's feminine. It, that is because it, it's devoid of any physicality. Any. You don't got to, as a kid, you used to want to get up and run. You want to go play. You want to go outside. You know how many times I asked my mama to go outside and she said no. <laughs> and the only thing I wanted to do was go outside. Please, please let me go outside. I just want to go outside. I've been in this house all day. I'm, let me go outside. And my mama would say no. Do you know how defeating that was? I know. Now they don't even ask to go outside. It's like they don't have the physicality is missing. And so we have a conversation about how men are supposed to actually be uh, asset to their communities. The thing that we can do is go outside. I remember mm -hmm. that the men in my community, they started a little league baseball. Uh, they started a whole league. And so all of a sudden, when the men are outside and they're getting the fields ready and they're getting the jerseys printed and they're setting up the whole tournaments, now the children have a place to go. And so when oh, yeah. men go outside, then kids go outside. Like we actually have to be <laughs> outside. Like we have, like we, if we want to have any type of real physical presence, we've got to be physically present. Correct. So <laughs> just because you are online and you are typing under a comment and now you are getting engaged with, that does not mean you are changing anything outside. When my children are here, I have to be present. If my children are here and I'm caught in a freaking perpetual scroll, they're looking at me like, man, if daddy's scrolling, I'm supposed to be scrolling too. And we if, all just goddamn scrolling. If you are a, a human being on this planet and you are of a, a black descent, and you are sitting on the couch while your kids are in front of you and you just scrolling on your phone. If you're a human I, being and you got air in your lungs, continue to listen to this powerful message. Go outside please show your kids physical love and i don't mean by being demeaning towards them or or actually trying to overpower them i'm showing i'm saying pick them up show them that you love them. hug them it's a physical thing that needs to be done and when they just see you sitting on your phone and scrolling you are not getting any love because I look at you and tell you what to do, I am not showing you any kind of love. You would have to get physical with those kids. Go play with them. Make tents. Do do things that will engage their imagination. And do not just sit around thinking that, oh, they'll be all right. They can entertain themselves. No, they cannot. So love is a physical uh, re reality also then, right? Yes, sir. But to me, <laughs> love personally is a commitment. Bro, what I'm saying is like, if you got a girlfriend and she stays uh, three miles away from you mm -hmm. and she tells you she loves you, but you'll never touch her, you're like, man, she got another boyfriend. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a play boyfriend. She didn't want to see me. She don't put no effort in actually touching me, man. Correct. <laughs> so you would not engage in that relationship any further, would you? So because you are allowing yourself to not be physical with them, then how can you expect them to have a connection with you? I'm just saying, she was she was on the phone scrolling. She got more Correct. options. <laughs> but in their opinion, I'm scrolling to to find you something. I'm scrolling to find you an outfit. So when you go outside, you could look good. But it, it, if black women understood, it does not matter how... Well, it, it matters how your kid look. Don't have them out there resting, Chris. <laughs> but you, you see, it does not matter the money spent on them because all of us went to school with uh, a couple of other black kids and then they had everything. And it was like, uh, their parents made sure like their parents spun all of their resources on making sure that their kid was that. Now, what I'm saying is that if you spun your resources on something, just hear me out. Just say, you can save it. You can invest it. You can do other things other than paying 260 every weekend or every other weekend so your son can have some Jordans. You talk like if I know that comes from a trauma response of not of lack. 
when I didn't have it, I want my children to have the things that I didn't have. I just understand building the connection. I'm asking people to be physically respond uh, to fit, be fiscally responsible with their resources, and, and that makes a whole lot of sense. But the best way you become uh, financially responsible is to, to learn uh, how to utilize money. We we have very little financial literacy available to us. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.